Hi everyone, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about regions and availability zones in our AWS, right? So these are two basic terminologies that we need to know, but most of us get confused when we hear these terms, right? So if they ask us, why do we need regions and availability zones, we'll not be in a situation to answer it, right? So this was one of my interview questions. So they asked me, why do we even need regions and availability zone? So I hope this video is going to help someone who is, uh, you know, having the same question, right? So first let us understand why regions and zones are required, right? So first imagine that your application is deployed in a data center, right? So let's say you have deployed that application in the United States, right? So what are all the challenges that you face? Right. So let's say you have your own uh, custom website and you have built that one and you are trying to run that application in the United States. So what challenges do you face? What your users may report? Right. So one, it could be the slowness, the slow access for users from other parts of the world. Let's say you are sitting in India and you're trying to hit that website, which is present in the United States. Obviously, the user will face some slowness because there is some latency, right? Latency as in he cannot access the server, which is far more away from him very easily, right? So that difficulty is there. And then what if the data center crashes or what if this entire data center goes down? Then that would be again a problem, right? So your application will obviously go down because if the data center is not operating so because of power outage or any floods or anything or any war or any anything right any disaster has happened let us imagine that and your application will go down that means there is no availability or low availability right so this is the reason why we need a regions and availability so how do you come up with this one right so how do you overcome this so one is to have multiple data centers so previously if you see here we are having only one corporate data center in the united states right so now what we can do is we can have two more i mean one more data center in the same region let's say we are speaking in us so this was the previous data center and we added one more into our list corporate data center two right so after adding one more data center in the united states what what happens slow access for users from other parts of the world is still there because they are sitting somewhere else in the world right so this is in us and this is in, in here they are sitting in india and they are trying to access this site which will obviously have some latency right so that is still there but the second question we had in the previous slide is what if the entire data center crashes, right? So you are still your application is still available from the other data center. So meaning what if let's say your one of the data center is went down. So this went down. So what happens if the users are trying to access the site or an application? So the other other data center is still up and running and that will serve the users right so this is you know solved by using this particular architecture but there is one more problem what if the entire region goes down what if the entire united states is down and later on your application will also go down we still have an issue here right we have not satisfied with whatever we had text so how to overcome this one so one one best thing is to go with multiple regions so previously if you see here we were having only one region that is us region now if you have another region let's say i have taken as hyderabad hyderabad is one of the region that i have uh, uh, you know considered because aws has launched new region uh, in uh, hyderabad location so i've considered that right so what challenges to do you still see right are there any challenges or everything is sorted right let's see one by one first slow access for the users from other parts of the world it is partly solved i would say because if people are in us and they are trying to access the site they get the response from us region if the people are in 
India and Asia specific region if they are around India they would be routed to Hyderabad location and they would be getting the response from the application present in the Hyderabad location. So th this is partly solved but if the users is, are some other uh, countries so then there will still a latency. But how can you come up with that? You can solve this by adding deployments for your application in another regions. So now we have only created two regions. But if you go with another regions, another regions, wherever your users are present, then this would also be solved. Right now, uh, let's consider this as a partly solved. The first point is partly solved. Right. So this one is done. Next, what if the data center crashes? Right, next, uh, this one. Let's assume the corporate data center one of your US region goes down. So you are still be you will still be able to access other three data centers, right? So you have four data centers. One is down, but you are able to access other three. Then that is not a problem for us, right? So if you read read out this one, your application is still live from the other data center, and you can access them, right? Now. Uh, sorry, it is not London here. It should be US. Sorry. Sorry for the typo. Uh, what if the entire region of US is unavailable? Let's say this entire region is down. Till then, even then, your application, you, you will be able to access your application because your application is also deployed in Hyderabad location. Right. So this is how you can tackle this one by using multiple regions. Right. Now let's talk about what are regions in AWS. Right. Imagine you setting up your own data center in different regions around the world. Would it be possible for you? Let's assume you are a startup. You're just getting started. So trying to build your own data center in in other parts of the country is highly highly difficult at the present situation right so to tackle that what aws has done is aws have come up with multiple regions around the world and and that keeps on expanding every year for example recently you know a couple of days back aws has launched one more region in india that is hyderabad Right. So they keep on adding these regions in India and outside India and around the world. Right. So these regions will help us deploy our application or resources, which helps us to keep our application highly available. Right. Let's talk about the benefits of regions before talking about uh, benefits of uh, regions and all. Let's see what are the different regions available by uh, hovering over this uh, particular site. So I've I've kept all this PPT in a GitHub re a repository and I will provide the link to that in the description box below. You can go and check that out. Right. So let me open this site and uh, see you there. All right, I have opened that site and uh, this lands me into this particular site that you are saying, right? So regions and AZs. So here, if you see, uh, there are a lot of uh, regions like North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia specific and Australia, right? So if you see here, um, the ones that are with the green dots are regions and the ones that are in red dots that those are coming soon. I mean, those regions are yet to be available, right? So here, if you see Canada West is still, you know, under progress, it will come in a while, right? So, but if you see this one, Canada Central is launched on 2016 itself. And how many availability zones you have? You have three availability zone in Canada Central, right? So let's see what are availability zones and all, right? So North America, you have these many, you know, you will get to see all the details, whatever the things that are required when creating any AWS infrastructure, right? So let's go to Asia specific and see what are the different regions available. Now, if you see here launched Hyderabad, it was launched just you know a couple of days back and if you see here launch date is 2022 and you will get three availability zones the other one is mumbai mumbai have, was launched before itself right i don't know why uh, yeah see here mumbai was launched on 2016 you will get uh, three availability zone and one local zone so local zone i'm not speaking in this particular video if you want me to make a separate video on local zones i will be doing that later all right so it will also give you 
the details regarding the particular region that you select right so if you want more information on the regions and availability zones what are the different regions available you can come to this site and visit this one all right so let's go on continue with our presentation okay now let's talk about the benefits of having a region right so in any architectural diagram of your aws if you see something like this a box with a blue color box with the region mentioned that means that indicates aws region so i purposefully added this one so if you see any architectural diagram you should be able to understand that this is a region right now let's talk about the benefits of having regions one is high availability as i already told you if one of the region goes down the other one will be operating for you and you can have the users access that particular application from that particular region right so it it gives you high availability second one is low latency let's say your you know customers are located in india region so then you can create your application or host your application in India region itself so that they can access that particular application without any latency, right? So and again, adhere to government regulations. So there are certain government rules and uh, compliance that are already there. Let's say like, uh, for example, um, all the ATM information or uh, the credit card information of people who stays in India should not live outside of India, right? So those, uh, you know, compliance or governance rules are already there. So if in, in that situation, this will help us a lot because if you want to cater to the uh, you know customers of india then you can obviously create that particular application in the india region itself right so in in that situation the data collected will be stored in india region itself and it will not travel outside india so for that reason we are also going to use region right while selecting region you need to choose the right region based on these following questions so when you are asking i mean when you are creating uh, resources when you are selecting the region you need to ask these questions where are your users located where are your end users located right so if they are located in australia go ahead and create the resources you know close to that region because you know the latency is the problem right so that is one thing and where is your data located so if the data is located in india and you are trying to uh, you know uh, provide uh, services for indian customers go ahead and create the resources in india region itself right because of regulatory and compliance issues so in the next point is regulatory and security compliance needs right so you need to ask these three questions before you know selecting the right region right so now aws services can be regional global or availability zone specific right so some uh, services are regional for example vpc and all so they are regional service that means every region will have you can create that resource in every region i mean one per region but global services are globally available iam is a global service right so it is available everywhere right so those things you can have it uh, uh, in global aws services right so next let's talk about the availability zones so if you see any architectural diagrams like this regions and availability zone mentioned like this that means you are speaking about this one as i to told you before this is a region and this is availability zone so now what are availability zone as you know they are isolated location inside the region right so each aws region has at least two availability zone right so let's say if you are speaking high uh, speaking about a region called hyderabad so then hyderabad will minimum have two availability zone inside that region right so it can be maximum six also there are some regions which has got uh, six availability zone for example north virginia us east one right so that also you can see in a uh, you know website i will show you where you can check those information and all right by using availability zone it will increase the availability of the application in the same region right so if one availability zone goes down the other one will be operating for you and you can you know 
host your application in multiple availability zones right in that situation it increases the availability of applications so now if you want to see what are the different regions and those availability zones inside that region you can visit this particular you know github repository so this is maintained by one person he has really documented it very beautifully so i always refer to this github documentation so i will show you how it looks okay now if you see here uh, he has documented it very clearly right so if you see here region code us east one what is the region name uh, so this is the code that aws has given for every region you will have a code like for mumbai it is ap south one like that they have uh, you know added the region name uh, and the region code here and availability zone you can see what are the different availability zones that you have if you see here as i told you north virginia the region has got six availability zone i think he has not updated this one but very soon he's going to do is what i am hoping so right if not you can also visit your official documentation of aws where you will get the clear picture right so uh, i'm sure that north virginia has got six re availability zone ohio three and frankfurt has got two like that it keeps on aws keeps on adding their uh, regions and availability zones every year so it needs to be updated so you can refer the documentation in the AWS itself so that it will be helpful for you All right, uh, that's it for today's video where we talked about what are AWS regions What are availability zones and why do we need those things, right? So if you're liking the content that I'm creating, please consider subscribing to, to my channel a monk in cloud Because it really motivates me a lot to make content like this. Thank you and I will see you in the next one